Hi guys, I'm Karen Rice and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am going to be just having the best fun in this video and I hope you paint along with me or you know watch the video through and then paint along afterwards knowing what's going to happen. So I'm going to be using my spray bottle, my plastic card, I'm going to be tilting, I'm, it's going to be messy. Well without any further ado, let's get started. So here is the finished painting. It's a lovely atmospheric loose watercolour. It's got reflections and trees, beautiful sky, lots of yummy techniques. So I'm going to start off as I did with one of my other previous YouTube videos with a dirty palette. I find using a dirty palette a really useful way of loosening up. I'm wetting the paper. It's a Winter & Newton 300 grams rough paper. I'm using just a large old paintbrush. I will put a list of all the materials I'm using in the description below. So here goes. I'm just uh, going to mix up some of the sort of look I've got an old bit of Prussian blue there it's dried up a little bit I've just added a little bit of water to it so I'm just going to load my brush now with this Prussian blue paint it wet on wet I've added a tiny touch of pink to that colour just to make a lovely purple shade I'm using a size 10 sable brush and I'm just tilting that to the left there letting it all run down don't be afraid to tilt get the paint moving especially wet on wet watercolor does such magical things when you do some tilting etc if your paint isn't moving it's because it's not wet enough a good tip is to get a little spritzer bottle and just give it a fine mist spray and it should get the paint moving again and what I do, as you can see, it's leaked down there onto the framing tape. And what I do is I'll just mop that up from time to time. Just to say, I'm actually painting this picture completely from my imagination. Obviously, I've painted a lot of landscapes in my time, but, you know, I'm just like to, I don't want to copy a photograph. I just want to see what happens. I find sometimes there's less pressure because if we're copying a photograph, we've got expectations here. I don't know what's going to happen, but I've just sort of putting background hills in here, a bit of green, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, I might make that look like water and reflection. So that's where I'm going with it. So just let that run down. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, this is just sort of greens from my palette, blue and yellow mixed together, and just, you know, obviously the leftover paint. What I love about this Winsor & Newton paper the rough paper is that can you see all that lovely texture on the paper it's beautiful so I'm just painting in some foreground grasses now with a small size four pointed sable brush as you can see my palette is lovely and dirty still as you can see I'm going right in the corner there just to get some old paint there's a little bit of blob of pink so it's mixing with this green to give sort of a kind of a neutral color but in this scenario when you drip a blob into a damp painting you get something called a back run it won't happen for another five minutes and it's that cauliflower edge so before that happens I've sprayed it away I've tilted my paper and as you can see now I've got a nice white cloud so that's a really good tip if that happens in your picture those spritzer bottles are brilliant so I really recommend getting one of those so now I'm going to paint some foreground grasses my painting is still damp so I'm just putting those in I thought that was a bit blue so I've added a bit more yellow to the green and just putting in some foreground grasses now I'm using my twig an apple twig which I got just from falling from an apple tree you know you can use other twigs as well just sharpen them with a pencil sharpener and I'm just now pulling this damp wet paint upwards to kind of sort of show like wildflowers or bulrushes or something like that so I'm gently sort of scratching into the into the painting so I'm just going to carry on just working on this foreground with a thin my little small sable brush putting in grasses damp into damp it's a mixture of blue and yellow so I'm going to use this dark color here um Payne's gray sort of color and I'm going to put in now the bank of this made up painting I'm doing so and now I'm just putting little sort of maybe trees or something but because it's quite damp the paint is running down I'm hoping this will look like reflection so I'm not going to be worried about it so I'm putting big some big trees here on the right hand side I find when you're working damp into damp it's probably better to use a smaller brush only because it doesn't hold so much paint so you don't lose too much control you might hear different from different artists it's just what works for me
So now for the exciting bit, I'm going to tilt these trees um, sort of forward so they all run up into the sky. Don't worry because it's thicker paint, it's not going to ruin the sky. So it's just to create some lovely natural textured edges which are exciting. Now I'm going to tilt it the other way because I want some of that paint to run into the water. Again, don't panic, the paint is damp so you should have that control but hopefully to create some lovely reflections. I'm just sprinkling ordinary table salt in the foreground. I do this on damp paper, so make sure your paper isn't too wet because it won't work as well. And you can see there's a little drip on the side here. Always keep an eye on those. Always wipe off your edges where there's little puddles because you will get backgrounds where you may not necessarily want them. So here's my little trusty plastic card. It's like a store card cut up, just a little corner of one. And the paint is damp, of course. And I'm using this to scratch into the paper. Now, you won't be able to get these, take these scratches away afterwards. So make sure you put these scratches where you want them. But what happens is they go dark because the paint goes into that little well and it's a really nice way of painting very thin sort of tree trunks in the distance you feel like you're actually drawing with the plastic card the other thing you can do with the plastic card is to lift off the paint so you're not scratching in now you're actually lifting off the paint so you sort of press down and then lift up and it pulls the paint off if it doesn't quite work wait for it to dry off a little bit more because it might be too wet and obviously sometimes it may have dried too much and you won't be able to lift off. So these are certain things that can happen. I'm just turning the, the painting around now and I'm just lifting off some of the where the shore is just to get a bit of light on the shore just to show where, it, where the land is and where the water is. And as you can see, it wasn't quite successful because I had to do it a couple of times. But I never kind of panic with watercolour. I always think, OK, I'll be able to sort this. I'm not going to panic. So I'm just using the side of the card now to pull out a little bit more light. So I'm not really sure about all of this. I think I've overdone it. So I'm going to bring out my little trusty spritzer bottle and just spray this area. And I'm hoping this might resolve a few things. I don't know, I haven't really got a plan. I'm just playing around here, seeing what happens. Okay, a good tip here, it's time to take stock. I'm looking at my painting, I've sprayed off some of that, that scraping out I did, so it softened it a bit. As you can see in the foreground, my salt has worked really nicely. So I've decided to start working a little bit on the foreground. I'm gonna paint some bulrushes. So it just really brings your eye into the foreground. And as you can see, I'm using my twig, it's literally neat paint. The painting is still slightly damp, but because you're using such thick, creamy paint straight from the tube, it's not going to do any harm. Um, to the left there, just below the waterline, you can see I've got a little back run developing. I'm not going to let that bother me. I actually think it's going to look quite nice as a reflection in the water. So it's good sometimes to let things be. Don't be a perfectionist when you're painting in watercolour because they've got all these characteristics that actually make the painting look beautiful as long as you leave it alone. So I'm just putting um, some grasses, some darker grasses in here now, quite thick creamy paint just to give it a little bit more texture in the foreground. So this is a really exciting thing to do. I'm using a small brush. Remember, I've just sprayed it and I've got all these sort of halo effects almost, as you can see on the left there. It's created a little bit of a back run in the sky. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding more water to these trees. And as you can see, I'm getting back runs at the top of them because when you add wet paint or water to damp paint, you get back runs. So they're the sort of things we want to avoid, but now I actually want a back run. So now I'm getting all excited. I'm putting in some, you know, more wet paint to create lots of texture in these trees, creating such a lovely sort of atmospheric feel. So I'm just really kind of, you know, when you get into a part of a painting where you think, oh, this is, this is going this way, because just as a reminder, I've got no photograph to work with here. I'm just carrying on just to see where the painting is taking me. So back with the trusty plastic card, because it's nice and damp here and the trees have got taller, I've actually now got to make the branches and the tree trunks taller. So that's exactly what I'm doing. So it creates this, you know, sort of darker mark in the paper. This is so much fun. This is pure creativity. I know it's kind of a little bit daring, but this is how I love to paint. I like to be creative like this. I mean, look at all those back runs to the right there. I mean, it's going crazy over there in those trees. It's just, it's just marvellous. 
So I'm really kind of getting into this painting. I've decided to sprinkle a little bit of salt. It could be a mistake. So um, I've decided now to give it a little spray and spray off some of this paint that's running down that doesn't look so pretty. I try not to touch the painting too much, if you notice, with the brushes and things like that. I like to sort of use cards and spritzer bottles and things like that to create these lovely sort of almost special effects that you can get with watercolour painting. OK, so I've sprayed off all the paint to the right here. And to be quite honest, I'm not really happy with what I've done. I'm a bit disappointed. I thought it would look better than this. So I'm actually going to start putting some paint back in. Um, just to see if this works. This is an interesting thing in watercolour that, that I want to show with you and be honest with you. It doesn't always go right. And in this instance here, you have to put things right. I've done a lot of teaching over the years and I've, I've helped students correct their paintings. And this is kind of a correction. My motto is to actually take off the mistake, you wash it all off or take it off, you've always got to put back in fresh creamy paint as well. It's almost to disguise what you've just done. So that's exactly what I've done here. But as you notice, you can still see the dark marks from the scratching of the plastic card. That will always stay there. So now I'm just putting it back in dark creamy paint. Do remember, I've not blow dried this painting once. This is all still quite damp my studio is quite warm but the paint is still damp the paper is sort of giving me these lovely soft edges while I'm working damp into damp so crisis over thank goodness and I can continue on with the painting I'm quite liking it again I love all the backgrounds at the top of the trees they're looking really gorgeous just adding a little bit of white watercolor it's really useful to use when you lose the light in your painting I'm just going to finish off the painting now with a bit of a spatter. You can see I'm using my hand to stop the spattering from getting in the into the painting. But if you're worried about that, put a piece of kitchen towel over your sky especially, because it's very difficult to get that out. Um, OK, so I've done all this spattering and I'm not quite sure about it. So again, I'll get out my little spritzer bottle just to soften it. I just thought it was a little, it looked a bit OTT. So I think I've taken you through the highs and lows of this painting, but I'm actually really pleased with it. It's drying really nicely. So yes, I'm just taking off the tape now because I have to leave it alone. And uh, I always love this lovely white edge you get after you take off your framing tape. There's so many techniques in this painting. This painting from my imagination. You've got your back runs, you've got the scratching out with the card, the lovely reflections from tilting, the bulrushes from the twig. And the salt, oh, it's just there's just so many things in here. I hope you've enjoyed it. I thought I'd show you the painting with a mount round it because it really brings out the best in any painting. I always recommend to have one on, on the side to put it round your painting because I tell you now, you'll feel a lot better about your painting. Sometimes you can be quite hard on yourself and think it's no good. Put an ordinary cream mount around it and suddenly it comes to life. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you'd like to get updates of my most recent videos. If you have any questions about this or anything else, please put them in the comments section below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.